Good afternoon, Valley City State University. This is Angela Mirso, Chair of the Art Department and Director of VCSU Art Galleries here today to talk with you about our next senior art exhibition by Lakin Chase, One Step Closer. Lakin has been here at VCSU now on five years and I have known her for all my time here at Valley City State University. And I hope you look forward to seeing this wonderful talk and please make sure to tune in afterwards at the CFA for our art reception. So, Lakin. Thank you, Angela. <laughs> um, like Angela said, I am a fifth year here at VCSU. Um, for our final artist project before we hit graduation, we are asked to put together an artist capstone um, where we collect artwork and then put like a show together for everyone to see. Um, so I am a photographer. Um, so some of the pieces that I will be showing in my presentation are close photos that I have taken over the few years that I've been here. Um, I'll first talk a little bit about myself. So I grew up as an only child in Foreman, North Dakota. Um, growing up, it was just my mom and I. Uh, my father left when I was really young, so just kind of the two of us. But my grandparents kind of um, helped out a little bit and took me under their wing. Um, kind of got me through life. So, uh, My grandpa saw my interest in photography more um, first before I did. Um, and then he used to buy me those little disposable cameras. Um, kind of to take on my adventures around the yard, um, kind of get me one step closer to my subjects. Um, fast forwarding to high school years, he gave me his Canon camera, um, and this is the camera that I still use today. Um, after all the practice I was getting with this camera, I started to put myself out there more with my work. Um, doing this, I was able to get more opportunities um, and working in different areas of photography. Um, I began working with my high school yearbook, taking pictures of the games and other events that I wasn't a part of. Um, and that kind of got me more interested in um, event, event and sports photography. And then also during this time, um, I was able to work alongside of another local photographer who gave me some pointers. Um, he also taught me how to edit my photos using Photoshop and then also how to shoot in manual mode with raw images. Um, after all the lessons that I learned, I was able to start developing my own style through photography and figuring out where I fit in. Um, by this time, I had just started college, um, taking more photography classes along with other art classes to help further expand my artistic abilities. Um, I started looking into other photographers and learning new skills and techniques from them, from them and learning more about what I like. So next I'll talk a little bit about my influences. My first photography influence that I feel really helps tie into my work um, is Ansel Adams. Um, he is an American landscape photographer and environmentalist um, that shoots with black and white images from the American West. Um, as I moved further into photography, um, Ansel Adams became kind of my go-to um, he was my inspiration when I took the water droplets on lily photo that is, that is in the gallery. Um, and then also my work has been influenced by wildlife photographers Isaac Spots and Arazu Karana. So Isaac Spots is a wildlife photographer um, that I get my inspiration from. Um, he also shoots landscape photography, and he is based in Wyoming. Um, he creates these beautiful pieces of longhorn sheep 
moose, bear, and other animals. And then from the piece on the screen, um, it gave me the idea to take the goat's eye, the bear's tongue, and the two buffalo heads that are hanging in the gallery. Uh, if I'm talking about more exotic animals and bright colors, I turn to Arazu Krana, who is based in India. Um, I feel like she strives to find the beauty in elements of nature through the lens colors. I always learn something new to try out after looking at all three of these photographers' works, um, whether it's about the composition, the color, format, or even the subject of the work. Um, there's always a new technique to try on my next group of photos. Uh, so next I will briefly go through some of my previous works. Um, these are photos that I have taken um, in my past photography classes. Both of the two pieces right now are from photography one and two. Um, they were kind of my better photos from the assignment. So um, I took these photo classes in an advanced research class where I was able to learn more about different styles of photography, um, kind of learning a little bit more about what I would enjoy. Um, these two photos are from photo two and three. Um, I definitely learned a lot from these classes. Um, from within each assignment that we had, there were um, different areas of photography and that's just kind of how it, hel it helped me develop what I was more interested in, mm -hmm. I guess. Um, these two photos are from, they're both from photo three. These last two photos that I'll talk about are from my advanced research class. Um, this is where I started learning more about close photography. And then in this class, it really helped me develop the idea for my artist capstone. Um, from this class, I was told that my um, close-up shots were some of my strongest works. So with that information, I knew instantly that I wanted what my topic would be for my artist show. Um, I already had so many ideas of what I wanted for my subjects. And then thanks to that class, I kind of already had a head start, so I just had to build off the images that I already had. Uh, next, I'll go through a little bit of my process project. So where I am from, there aren't a lot of photographers in the area. So a lot of the things that I've learned over the years have come from like YouTube videos or articles that I found online. Um, I didn't start editing my photos until I started working with the yearbook in high school. And then even then, I only did kind of the bare minimum. Um, I really like keeping my photos as close to the original as possible. Um, also, by teaming up with the local photographer down there, I was able to learn more about um, editing and how to edit raw photos. Um, more about manual mode, like I said. Um, these photos, along with some of the next slides, are screenshots from my process project that I have linked in my website, if you would all like to view that. Um, how I edit, I use Adobe Photoshop for all of my photos. Um, basically just adjusting the vibrance or the brightness, um, trying to keep it as close as I can to the original image, like I had mentioned. Um, there are a few times where I have to edit a piece of grass out of the subject's face or add a few layers of detailing to the background to cover whatever is back there, but most of the time um, I like to just bump up the color a little bit and, like I said, keep it 
to the original image as much as possible. Okay, so now I'll talk about pieces that are in my art show. Um, this first piece is called Turtle Scales. It is a photography piece um, that I took in 2022. Um, we went on a family trip to the Black Hills and I was able to capture this guy. <laughs> um, I have taken a lot of photos in many areas of photography many areas of photography over the years, but the one thing that I always seem to find myself doing in each session is seeing how close I can get to my subject. It's kind of a thrill, I guess, for, my, for myself, um, trying to see how much I can push the boundaries and see how much detail I can capture in one image. Um, for me, I think of close photography as kind of like a game of I spy. Mm -hmm. um, see how far you can um, in the image to see if you can spot something that people normally wouldn't see. Um, so that's what I think of when I look at some of my pieces. Um, when I first think of closeness, I think about my family and how close we are to each other. I think about how my mom is more than just a mom to me. Um, I also think about my grandparents and how, how long they've been together and just kind of the relationship that I have with all of them. Um, while developing my artwork for One Step Closer, I think the little details in the photos um, that you might not see until you take a closer look is really kind of my focal point. Mm -hmm. Like the details in the blades of grass or the little piece of cotton wedged between the layers of pine cones. Like that's, those are the things that I look for. Um, for my show, I wanted to combine nature photography and close photography to show my viewers what I see through my camera's lens. Um, I wanted to show off more of the little details that people seem to miss out on if they don't take that one step closer. And I look back at some of my old photos and just think of ways that I can recapture the image, um, try to really push those boundaries and get as close as possible the next time. Um, I really hope that my viewers enjoy looking at my pieces and try to challenge themselves to take one step closer. Thank you, Lakin. You just enjoy photography in its own Self. So what's your future? As I am hoping to find a photography job somewhere in this region, um, but we'll just see where it takes me after graduation. Could you walk in about two weeks? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Crazy. That, yeah. Crazy. And you've gone through a lot here with being over in McCarthy and now in the new Center for the Arts, which how do you enjoy that being a student over there? I think it's great. I think that we have a lot more ability now and a lot more area to spread out versus mm -hmm. over in McCarthy where we're all just kind of shoved <laughs> up in a little corner. <laughs> but yeah, um, with your photos, especially, especially the turtle one, how close were you when you took that shot? Mm, I was probably from me to you away. Oh, wow. Yeah. So that's about a good three feet about three four feet yeah yeah yep um wow that's a very were you in on the ground doing it oh yeah <laughs> yep I was right in the turtle's face right in it and you weren't afraid that the turtle was going to do it's not a snapping that's a box tor turtle it's a well I guess it's more of a, a tortoise than a turtle tortoise. it's okay one of those big ones big ones yeah but no the um the people that work with her were around her, so I was, I was okay. You're okay. And for viewers tuning in, there is a QR code that will come across the bottom of your screen. You're more than welcome to ask questions, so feel free to ask questions, folks, to our audience tuning in live right now. So with your photo work, was there any other classes you enjoyed here? 
outside of photography? I would say for sure my drawing classes. Drawing classes? Yeah. That was, that's kind of an area that, um, besides photography, that I feel like I excel in. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So what advice do you give to students who are currently here at VCSU going through the art program? Mm -hmm. Do what you love. <laughs> um, I feel like there has been a lot of ups and downs mm -hmm. within kind of my art experiences mm -hmm. since being here. Um, and I've just kind of learned that, you know, not everyone's going to like what you do. And as long as you love it, that's all that matters. Which is important. Um, oh, we got a lot of questions coming in. Do you ever stage photos? I feel like I have, but not my wildlife photos. Not true. No. No. Those were kind of like that spontaneous, like, because you yeah. can't stage a turtle. Like, you're going to yeah. sit right here. Please don't. Yeah. <laughs> Is that the, like, that seeing eye game you were talking about earlier? That's. Mm -hmm. that favorite thing of like where can you go find oh there's a squirrel yes yep um, and um, sometimes I'll just go and sit for hours until I find something otherwise I move on to the next spot next but spot. it's just kind of whatever's there is what I take a photo of okay what is your favorite thing you have ever photographed oh <laughs> <laughs> tough question that is a tough one um I think it's a toss up between my water droplets on lily piece that's in the gallery and my seagulls piece mm. that I submitted for a juried art exhibition or something. Okay. Yeah. Oh, cool. So the water droplets. Yeah. Everyone will now go to that one and be like, <laughs> okay, we have to look at this closer. Oh, I hope you do. <laughs> um, with the photos that are grouped together in your show in the gallery, were those planned that way? Mm, I don't think so. Okay. I mean, I kind of went with nature together and animals together. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel like if any of them were more planned, it would be like the buffalo heads and maybe the dragonflies. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, I just kind of kept with a theme as I was hanging up. Okay. So I, the way it sounds like your themes emerged as you were putting your show up, like, oh, these all would go together. Yeah. To this. Okay. Yep. Just kind of going by like what colors looked nice mm -hmm. and how it all balanced. Yeah. What is the best lens for your close up? work that you've done so far hmm. <laughs> that is a good question um honestly I don't even know what lens I use I kind of switch out between my three um, a lot of my like animal photos and stuff like that mm -hmm. are more of my 600 millimeter lens. Mm -hmm. And I just kind of, if I have to get out of my car, I get out of my car. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, but yeah, I have between, I have three of them that I use. Okay. Yeah. And are you hoping to keep with the Canon or are you hoping after graduating of getting something different or going to the next level? I think I'm going to stick with Canon with Canon. Yeah. I, I tried Nikon. Not my favorite. Not your favorite. So I <laughs> so what camera would you suggest for people who don't have any camera background to start getting into photography? Well, I know that the campus here, you practice on Nikons. Mm -hmm. um, I definitely feel like they're a little bit more easier to maneuver through. Um, I personally would go with Canon just because it's, it's my brand. But <laughs> <laughs> um, Well, you also even said the disposable cameras. 
I mean, yeah. they're still out there. It's, you can find it at Walmart, I promise, folks. Yeah. <laughs> Would you even say trying that if you're just starting out of, like, where to do? Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, if you aren't really sure, like, which area you want to take photos in, but you just want to start taking photos, absolutely. Because those are so inexpensive to right. go to the store and get develop the film right there. Right. Which is, is that a part, do you miss that? Um, I would say in a way, mm -hmm. there's just a lot of, like, technology nowadays, and I'm not a big technology person, so <laughs> it's the simpler the better, I guess, for myself, but. No, which makes, I mean, disposables, they've been around for so long that it's just click it through and mm -hmm. get your shot to where yeah. you need to go to. Um. What is the most difficult for you to photograph, animals or plants? Hmm. Out of the two of those, I'd probably say animals. Okay. Just because, you know, plants don't move, so <laughs> I don't have to worry about blurred photos or anything. Blurred. But Have you ever, when you've gone out on your trips, have you ever gotten an accidental awesome photo that you're like, oh my gosh, this actually worked out perfectly. I did not even plan it. Oh, absolutely. Um, the seagulls photo that I was telling mm -hmm. you about earlier, um, we ended up having like hunters on the other side of the lake. Mm. So I was just going for the seagulls on the ground, but as soon as they yeah. shot, they all <laughs> flew, flew away and it turned out better than what I'd planned, so. <laughs> that happy accident. Mm hmm And so it sounds like your water droplets on lilies, like your, is that your favorite piece in the show? Or is there something else you really are, like that's your most favorite piece? I would say yes. Um, it's, I guess there's a, it's a toss up between my water droplets and my watch your surrounding piece. Okay. Yeah. A toss up. Yeah. Oh. But they're they're two they're two very different subjects, mm -hmm. so it kinda depends on what you're talking about, I guess. What you're talking about. Okay. Is there any I know we're basically talking with photography and I know you've taken design all the art classes here mm -hmm. at VCSU here VCSU here. Is there one medium you would love to try that you did not try? Hmm. I would say not off the top of my head that I have an answer for that. Because okay. I feel like we touch a lot of different mediums in our art classes. Mm -hmm. um, but if there's any suggestions, <laughs> I'm all for it. <laughs> I was going to say weaving, but that, that back in art history four, when we did the in-class weavings we were doing. Yeah. Because that was. Yep. I guess we could touch a little bit more on that one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Something of going up close into like how interweavings when. Mm hmm There's your next theme. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Would you do, I know you did animals and nature. Mm -hmm. Would you do portraits up close? Or is that. I'm going to say no. Okay. Because <laughs> taking photos of people are hard. <laughs> taking photos of people are hard. I mean, I yeah. have done it, mm -hmm. but I prefer animals or nature. Animals or nature mm -hmm. safer. Over people any day. <laughs> yeah. I get it. I understand. Completely get. Um, is there any place you want to travel that you haven't been to? I want to travel everywhere. Okay. Like, is there a spot in the world that's like, if you could go tomorrow? If I could go tomorrow, I'm going to Greece. Ooh, why? Yeah. I don't know. There's just something about it. I've always wanted to go. The nature, sea, just... I think so. I think so. The mythology behind. <laughs> yeah, that, that could be. Okay. I know, like, we did a project in one of our other art classes, and it was kind of like a dream destination type mm -hmm. of deal and 
I picked Santorini, Greece. I didn't even have to think about it. Like that's, it's always been the top of my bucket list. So now you know where to go to take photos. And oh yeah. I guess draw too. Yeah, yeah. I could draw there too. You could draw there. It's nice, warm. <laughs> Um, and you also were interning the past, what is it, two semesters? Mm -hmm. How has that helped with your show? I feel like that's really helped a lot. Okay. Um, they've kind of given me, I don't know the right word, um, kind of the ability to try new things, mm -hmm. I guess, in the marketing department. Mm -hmm. They have a lot of technology down there as well that mm -hmm. I have never tried before, and I was able to learn how to do it with them so nope which is important mm -hmm. um let's see any other questions coming from our studio audience okay and then do you have any advice to the non-majors who are non-art majors if if there was a class to start to take an art class, which one would you say to take? I th think if I would have to pick one, I would probably say either intro to design or even drawing one Okay, would be my first two that I would start with just gave you the basic foundations or just the way of exploring yeah yeah they really um it's kind of it's it's a uh, they're good starter classes especially if you want to get into art but you don't know mm -hmm. which path you want to take mm -hmm. which has probably been the best thing here for you is you've had multiple different paths since we had with our new digital design program and then going into the new building you've mm -hmm. been <laughs> you've been a part of all that fun process oh yeah <laughs> um and since i know you were doing for a while the sports photography with the marketing department here a little bit and mm -hmm. even when you were in the photo classes do you miss doing it i mean i know you've been doing the nature but I guess, mm, I think if I miss anything about the sports photography, it's just kind of the, like, the fast-paced, the action shots, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, but, like, for me, I would rather sit and watch the sport, okay. the game, whatever it is that I'm taking a photo <laughs> of. So either I would get too lost in the camera or I would mm -hmm. get too lost watching the game and forget to take pictures. <laughs> so, <laughs> Which... You can't do when you're taking right. for a journal or right. marketing promotion. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess that's why nature has always been that go-to back. Yeah. Plus it's peaceful. Just peaceful. and Yeah. With the... Because I know with Ansel Adams, and I know he's more of a black and white photographer mm -hmm. and more of the old-fashioned large format. Yes. Would you ever want to learn how to do that? Absolutely. Yeah, um, I've done so many projects on Ansel Adams, and I just, mm -hmm. I would love to learn more about how he takes his photos and stuff like that, mm -hmm. so yeah. And do you hope to keep on, from your three inspirations, keep on following their kind of paths? I know you at one time said you wanted to be a nature photographer, mm -hmm. or is that still on the game plan, or you just see which way life throws it? Um, I think I'm definitely going to see, you know, what, what life throws at me, <laughs> see which direction I go. Um, I will always love nature photography and I feel like that's just always going to be my go-to. Mm -hmm. And if I can find a, find a job that allows me to do that, then great. But if not, it'll, it'll be a, still a hobby of mine. So there you go. Um, and I got another question that came in. Mm -hmm. So what advice do you have for people who aren't confident in their photographic or artistic abilities? And how would you overcome this type of situation? Hmm. 
trying to think of kind of what I did for myself because I feel like I was not as confident in my photos mm -hmm. when I first started. Mm -hmm. um, even to this, even to this day, I'm. There are some photos that I'm like, mm, I can do better, you know. But you just got to keep pushing yourself. Mm -hmm. Don't let one photo or one person tell you that if they don't like it, you know, don't let them um, discourage you from keeping keep taking photos because mm -hmm. at the end of the day it's what you want mm -hmm. and that's a big thing on with your own confidence throughout the five years I've known mm -hmm. you <laughs> um, and that's something I think for anybody when you go into the arts especially you may at first feel un not as confident but you do grow with it oh yeah Yes, and you do. You do grow the more you keep at it. Mm -hmm. um, it also kind of helps to have a support system as well. Mm -hmm. um, we are a very small art community. I feel like on this campus, there's not a lot of us that are majoring in it. Mm -hmm. um, but the group that we do have is very like I'm. I'm glad that I met them mm -hmm. for sure has helped through the past four years, four, five years. Yeah, be. four or five years, yeah. Four or five years. They've definitely helped me a lot. I guess yeah. there's going to be tears at graduation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there will be. Will be. Yeah. Um, Just got to find your people. Find, find what you are interested in. Which is important, in, especially in college. Yeah. Because um, you were balancing at one time being a work-study student and taking classes and working. Mm -hmm. How did... How did you handle that? Not well. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, you handled it well. Yeah, more I, than <laughs> it was a struggle for sure. Mm -hmm. um, the first couple of years, I didn't, I didn't do a whole lot besides working and schoolwork. Mm -hmm. So it, it does take a toll on you. Um, but you just got to figure out how to balance everything. Yeah. Which is, goes back to that support system mm -hmm. and... I guess it's important also with that support system to get you involved into the clubs here on campus. and Yes, and there are a lot of them. A lot. So there's definitely something for everybody. <laughs> Which is important. You can't just stick to one puzzle piece that's going to fit everybody. Mm -hmm. That's the one unique thing here at VCSU. Yeah. And just from what the sounding of your experience, you appreciated having the smaller classes. Oh, yes. Yeah. For... Um, I came from a small school, mm -hmm. so I didn't want anything bigger than what I'm used to. Mm -hmm. um, plus, I feel like that would have given me a lot more anxiety than I already had. <laughs> so small classes, small community small is, commun a, is definitely where to go. Definitely where to go. And let me see if anybody else has any other questions as we're all... And... Was there your, did you have a favorite art class? Drawing, which, I would say. Which one? <laughs> um, trying to think of, is it, I think it was drawing one. Oh, drawing one. Yeah. Yeah. Besides, <laughs> besides all my photography classes that okay. I took, um, probably drawing one was one of my favorites. Yeah. And that was when we were in COVID too. Mm-hmm. That was fun. Yeah. <laughs> But we made through it. We did. Yep. And you've gone through, you're now in the third drawing class right now, mm -hmm. just to finish up and take in the advanced research studio that really helped sound and helped out a lot for yeah. your show. And yeah, definitely gave me um, a little foot forward before everything got all serious. <laughs> got all serious. So do you have any final comments you want to give to our studio audience? Thanks, or before. Um, thank you for tuning in. I hope to see you at my reception. So, again, thank you, Lake and Chase. You did an amazing job, and we will miss you here in the art department. Um, I know I've been for being here for five years. It gets when you see students graduate. I'm happy, and I will be missing a good bunch <laughs> of you who are getting ready to graduate right now. Um, so again, to everybody who's tuning in, faculty, staff, students, alumni, friends of the art department, 
thank you for tuning in on this wonderful cold day in North Dakota. Um, do take the time to come over to the Center for the Arts Gallery lobby around three o'clock. We will have a small reception with hot cider and cookies, cake. We would love to see you ask questions to Lakin, uh, see your artwork up close. And we look forward to seeing you again next Friday on December 9th at two o'clock when we will be talking with our last senior, Nicole Hurt, for her show, Hidden Underneath, as we wrap up this fall 2022 and getting ready for our spring 2023 exhibitions. So again, thank you all for tuning in. Thank you for supporting all the arts, and I look forward to, you, forward to seeing you in the Center for the Arts. Thank you, and go Vikings! <laughs>